Okay, so uh, let's continue our discussion with um, what happens as we move on to um, proportional derivative controller. So that means uh, we are adding a new term, the derivative term, and we want to see what's happening with the derivative term. Okay, so let's call this the proportional uh, proportional derivative or PD controller. Okay, so in this case, our um, layout, and let me redraw it for you. In this case, we will have two terms, so we still have the comparison block here. Uh, the error comes out, but what happens is that the error is first uh, going with a gain, but this term is supplemented by uh, kd times s term. So the error is also differentiated with respect to time, and that term is multiplied by the derivative coefficient. And these are added together uh, to generate the actuation signal for uh, the plant. Okay, so we will have s squared plus 10s uh, plus 20 as our plant and our usual uh, unity feedback from the output. So what is our open loop transfer function? Uh, open loop TF is basically a G of S, a GC of S, G of S, and that is given by uh, these two terms uh, for the controller K and KDS uh, are combined in the numerator K plus uh, KDS which uh, gives us a open loop zero here. Open loop zero. Uh, and also uh, we have exactly the same denominator uh, of the open loop transfer function. Okay. So what about the type of the system? What happened with the type is that nothing changed with the type. This is still a type zero type 0 system because nothing changed in the denominator okay so that means uh, ESS will be given by uh, ESS will be given by um, again the same term 1 over 1 plus KP okay and where KP is limit S goes to 0 uh, GC of S, G of S, and that is given by limit S goes to zero. Our, uh, it's already here, right? So that's going to be, uh, this term will be cancelled out, right? This term will be cancelled out as S goes to zero. These two terms will be cancelling out. So this term still comes out as K over 20 and therefore ESS is not changed it's still the same right 20 over 20 plus K so nothing has changed with the steady state error so the derivative controller didn't have any effect on uh, the steady state error uh, but as we will see right now it's gonna have uh, an effect on the transient behavior okay so uh, ESS behavior did not change. Uh, the transient behavior, on the other hand, transient uh, we need to again recompute the closed loop transfer function. Okay, so that's going to be, again, uh, 
k plus kds over uh, s squared plus 10s plus 20 and we have 1 plus k plus uh, skd or kds over s squared plus 10s plus 20 uh, this will simplify to uh, k plus kds and in the denominator we will have s squared plus uh, 10 plus kd s uh, plus k plus 20 okay so s squared plus 10s plus 20 plus kds will combine with uh, 10 and k will be combined with 20 okay so that's going to be our uh, transfer function now again uh, we will have to make the same uh, assumption so ts is not in standard form in this case, uh, we not only have a discrepancy between the gain in the numerator and this term, uh, the last term in the denominator, but we also have a zero in the in the numerator. So uh, for uh, k larger than kd, meaning that the s term is negligibly small as compared to uh, the constant term, and uh, k uh, also being uh, larger than 20 uh, we can assume so okay so we will still assume that the denominator is basically what determines uh, the transient behavior without any significant effect from from the zero okay in fact if you use MATLAB uh, to uh, sketch the unit step response of this transfer function and you play around with different values of k and kd uh, you can actually uh, start to see that uh, the zero will have an effect on the uh, transient behavior if uh, these conditions are violated uh, or uh, the zero in the numerator actually becomes very close to one of the poles uh, of the transfer function okay so, uh, so we will have uh, omega n square again, assuming uh, standard form, we will have omega n square equal to k plus 20 and 2 psi omega n uh, being equal to 10 plus kd. Now, uh, psi omega n is no longer a constant, okay, uh, but it's a function of kd, all right. So, uh, so we can uh, also calculate the damping ratio from here. Uh, the damping ratio comes out as 10 plus kd over 2 k plus 20. Okay. So let's see what, uh, what that means for us. Okay, so now uh, if we look at the damping ratio, uh, we see that um, k, if you increase k, you will decrease the damping ratio. That means uh, the effect of k on the overshoot, the maximum overshoot is still the same. If you increase k, you will reduce the steady state error, but you will start increasing the maximum overshoot but on the other hand uh, the derivative coefficient uh, kd does not have any effect on uh, the steady state error uh, but it has a tendency to increase uh, damping ratio therefore uh, kd has uh, a potential to counteract the effect of k okay so uh, let's summarize what we are saying here is that if I increase k, we will have ESS being reduced. Okay, 
but also we have an effect where um, MP percent, the maximum overshoot will increase and also omega D will increase, okay, which is the oscillation frequency. Okay, so uh, this is good, uh, but unfortunately these two are bad for an overall system behavior, okay? Uh, but on, if we also consider KD increasing, okay, uh, that's going to have an effect of increasing the damping ratio, and therefore uh, it will have an effect of decreasing the maximum overshoot, okay? In fact, KD by itself does not have any effect on the oscillation frequency, okay? So omega D will uh, stay the same, but as psi omega N changes, okay, if you increase KD, uh, psi omega N will increase, therefore the poles will move uh, towards the left in the J omega plane, okay? Sorry, uh, in the S plane. So uh, if we try to sketch what's going to happen, is that uh, if this is our original system, okay, in fact, uh, increasing K moves the system uh, along this line, so this is what happens with, with KD, uh, sorry, this is what happens with K increasing, okay, but uh, In fact, uh, when you increase KD, uh, what's happening is that uh, Xi omega N, which is this uh, real part, in fact, you will be moving horizontally towards the left, okay? So this is the effect of increasing KD, okay? So you will have a system like this. So if you have both K and KD, obviously it's going to be a combination of this. So uh, you will be ending up uh, somewhere in this region where um, uh, you can damp um, the oscillations that are increasing with K. Okay. So KD uh, has potential to potential to damp. Uh, oscillations uh, stabilize the system okay so uh, let's say uh, by limiting the increase uh, of MP percent as well all right so that's what we have uh, with proportional derivative uh, control okay uh, and what remains uh, to be uh, studied is the integral controller so I'm going to move on uh, to to that in the in the next video segment